Uh, good morning, everybody. David back here in Altoona, Iowa at Scale Models Midwest's workbench. Welcome back. Hope that you're having a great week. Just a quick week update here to kind of show you some of the kits in my collection that represent uh, big rides with big engines. And uh, just thought I'd share them with you, especially after this past weekend when I showed off the 63 Galaxy 500 that I plan on doing just like that with a NASCAR chassis. Um, and I got some tips on that, so thank you very much for those who made the comments. Certainly appreciate it. I'm definitely going to leave the body color as is. I will bare metal foil it, adapt the NASCAR chassis. I am going to make it a slammer, so I will not be opening the hood on this one. But uh, if everything looks good, I've got another set of rooms very similar to these from Z-Man Wheels that I'll use on a second build, and I'll just go out and buy another Galaxy 500 kit, make it my own, my own color, and what have you. And of course, showed you this awesome Chrysler 300 that was built by somebody else. I lay no claims to it other than I bought it. Someone else built it. They did a dang good job on it. And I've had some people commenting on this saying, you know, that's a good idea, buying someone else's kit so they can see how someone else built something. I highly recommend it. Even if you buy just one or two kits from someone else, whether it be at a garage sale or off of eBay or wherever, buy someone else's kit and see how they put something together and maybe glean some tips and tricks just by doing that making your kits a little bit better that's what this hobby is all about so just wanted to show that one off again so as you saw in the thumbnail i had a couple of big rides that i wanted to show you to you that i've built over the years i think i showed you this one already in a previous build but since it is a big motor big rides deal wanted to show this the 1962 buick collector 225 it's the amt kit i do have a tendency to keep my boxes for the kits over time and uh kind of cool if you end up selling a kit you can put it in the original box and that just makes it good for the next person this one was done a lot of bare metal foil a lot of hand painted trim the engine it's just the typical buick not a lot of anything other than just some paint detail. Chassis much the same way, kind of weathered a bit. The interior, I typically like white interiors to show detail, but if you kind of look in there, I did some uh, light blue Ken's fuzzy fur for flocking. Nice dashboard, and in the back, I used one of the AMT uh, pieces in there, a little stuffed teddy bear that my daughter wanted me to paint pink, so I did just that and um, put that on the display shelf so it's pretty cool it's a good size kit i remember my parents had a 65 or 66 deuce and a quarter convertible that i had hoped one day to own myself but my babysitter at the time bought it from them for 50 dollars and used it to store just a bunch of empty beer cans and soda cans and then the car ended up getting junked uh it's a shame because it was a nice looking buick Second car I was going to show you is this. I'm trying to think if it's a 62 or 63 Chevy. This one I really like. This one I had displayed for about six months at Great Hobby Adventures out in West Des Moines uh, before they closed. It's a kit that I really liked. Just need to clean it up a bit because I still have some wax in there. The interior I did basically the same color as the body and I'll try and get it so you can see the detail just a little bit more get the light on that the cars of the 60s and even the late 50s just were really nice i i like the fins i like the space age look the turbine look if you will they just really did the trick for me um even edsel's this one i uh did a little bit of overspray on the bottom um lost the exhaust pipes after the mufflers but uh, that'll be something we can fix someday and I did put uh, aftermarket rims and Pegasus discs on the wheels and then the engine you can see there nice little setup just wiring and uh, you know paint detail that was kind of cool I liked it and again, you know, once they were built, displayed, brought back home, just put up on the shelf, and it was all good. The next two kits that I've got here, um, they were done from Pro Modeler kits and uh, 
basically you just build them you don't need paint or anything this one was of Pontiac I think this is the Catalina but uh, dusty as it is this one I built without any paint nothing else other than I didn't like the hubcaps that came with it so I put rally rims on it and this might be a kit that I'll take one day and kind of redo because I do like the rally rim part of it but uh, you know kind of maybe a black wash but what was so cool about these pro modelers is that they even included fuel lines I mean if you see that right there the fuel lines going from the twin carb 421 down and in front of the engine block it was really neat this next one again this one is another kind of like pro modeler kit this is a Dutch Cornette I think 64 65 and it's a lot like the 64 uh, super stock that I showed over the weekend about the same size and for the engine of course again this one was built box stock just all the paint that it came with twin carb I believe this is the max wedge but again another nice big car with a big motor and you can't go wrong with Kragers. I, I think the Krager rims are probably the rim to have on any car. I just think they're really cool. So, got two more cars to show you. This one, just like the Chrysler 300, is a kit that I bought off of eBay. It's someone else's build, but again, I bought this so I could see how someone else built their kit. And plus, I really like the color. And I like the fact that it's a big car with a big motor. You'll see in a moment how big. Chassis is pretty much understated. Rear axle is painted the same color as the body. I think this is the 50s Aqua. And the license plate might be a little bit of a, a giveaway. Venom. But it's just a sharp kit. The guy, when he put the kit together, he actually said he cut a little pie out of the top of each of the tires so it could fit under the wheel well without having to cut into the uh, plastic or the chassis and I could see why he did that and uh, that's a little tip to have so you don't have to go cutting into it and just make it look nice and stock okay there you go <laughs> a Viper V10 how cool is that I think it is that's the reason why I bought the kit not just because of the color in fact I like the car but he shoehorned a Viper engine into the engine bay and the guy said he didn't have to do any cutting when I look underneath he's telling it right he didn't have to do anything other than kinda cut the tie rod and then re-glue it so it fit but it's just a very sharp kit I like the fact that they had a little V10 in it so uh, Again, it's a, it's a car built by somebody else. I wanted to see how somebody put that together. And uh, there you go. Then last but not least, one of my favorites, even though it's not the most detailed, is that. This was about as big as, as uh, a car is in my collection besides the uh, Catalina and the Buick. But um, I have always liked the Chevy Impalas. Always. And this one is it. Again... You've got, these look like, I think, Keystone Raiders, maybe, or whatnot. But if they're not Kragers, they're them. But, I mean, just look at that. That's The body lines are sharp. Um, I didn't do a white interior. It was just primer black on this one. And then the engine. Put together with some wiring. And um, just basic detail. Coil. But I thought it was sharp. I liked it. Um, I know that about a year or two ago they came out with a supernatural Chevy Impala, the four-door. And I wanted to buy one, but I never got it. Uh, never got around to getting it. Um, I might still, if I see one in the store, pick one up. Build it as a companion piece to this one. But still, I like it. Need to glue the rear tail panel on still. But it's a sharp car. It's got a good set of lines. So basically that was it. I uh, just want to give you a quick little update on those. 
Uh, this weekend I'll have something coming regarding the charger, I'm showing you some progress on that. And um, other than that, I just hope you have a great weekend. Fourth of July coming up. Be safe with whatever you do. Um, and we'll just catch you in the next video. See ya.